Hey everyone, I'm Harley from Astro Photo Booth, and tonight I'll be shooting the Rosette Nebula in the constellation Monoceros. Now the Rosette Nebula is a emission nebula located in the constellation Monoceros. If you look at the shoulder star Betelgeuse of Orion and move a little bit to the left, that's where you will find the Rosette Nebula lying. It's about 5,000 light years away and is a rather large nebula at 100 light years in diameter. Now I recently acquired this ASI 2600MC Pro one-shot color camera and I'll be using a TS Optics 90 millimeter F6 aprochromatic refractor telescope. To control everything, I'm using the ASI Air Plus. This is essentially the brain of the whole operation here. Um, this allows me to use my iPad and image pretty much remotely or not have to touch anything after getting everything set up. Another interesting piece of kit that I have from ZWO is their EAF, their Electronic Automatic Focuser. This will allow me to change my focus at the touch of a button, or rather touch of a touch screen, on my iPad. Now this isn't my first time imaging with this telescope and setup. Uh, I was finally able to capture my first deep sky astro image. And for only having about three and a half hours worth of data, I actually got quite a bit of detail in some of the spiral arms of Bode's galaxy, so I was pretty impressed with this setup. So for the last few nights, I've actually been out here in my front yard under some Bortle 5 skies using this setup to capture the Rosette Nebula. I want to get as much detail and uh, signal as possible. So I've taken advantage of this gorgeous weather that we're having right now here in Central Texas and just trying to capture as much data as possible with this setup. Now, although I'm under some Bortle 5 skies, which is better than a lot of people have, I'm able to capture some really awesome narrowband data because I'm using a Optolong L-Extreme narrowband filter. This is a duo narrowband filter that captures hydrogen alpha as well as oxygen 3, which is or ionized oxygen O3. And with this setup, I'm able to actually shoot through the moon and light pollution. All right, while well, I got a little bit of daylight available, I'm gonna go ahead and finish connecting everything and getting set up, and then I'll start doing a polar alignment and getting my focus in. Now that I've got my polar alignment, I've got my mount slewed to NGC 2244, the Rosette Nebula. I've activated my guide camera and it's currently calibrating. Once that's done, I'll be ready to start imaging. And for tonight, I'm gonna to be doing 300 second exposures. These five minute long exposures will really bring that hydrogen alpha detail out in the Rosette Nebula, especially since I have this Optolong narrowband filter on. It'll really give me great detail even in this half moonlight that I have right now. All right, I have everything set up. Here's my first preview image. I'm about to start my auto run, but I just wanted to show you guys real quick, kind of a quick preview of what it looks like. Now this is again a stretched image. Um, basically it takes that five minute long exposure and it's stretching it out like you would in like a software like PixInsight. So it's basically just like it says, a preview. But look at that, look at the stars, the hydrogen 
dust, lots of detail in just this little five minute long exposure. Hopefully these high clouds that we have tonight stay clear and I'm able to add some more signal to my final image. Now you may notice here on my counterweight that I have added a few extra little things to help give me that east heavy balance. I added some small uh, metal clamps, I use these for welding, and I've got, you can't really see it here because I don't want to touch them out right now, but I've got a bolt and some like washers and some nuts on there on the uh, counterweight shaft to help give me just a little bit more extra weight. Uh, on the east side of the mount once you know when you're originally balancing everything that way all the gears kind of stay uh, in in their teeth in their respective teeth so that, that helps kind of reduce slop in your guiding so far everything's working really good i do have a few little light clouds passing by here and there um, the last two nights that i've been shooting has been perfectly clear not a not a cloud in the sky so i am getting a little bit of tiny tiny bit of cloud cover tonight but i'll just have to go through my images once i'm done but when i when i look at my previews so far everything's looking good so all right i'm going to continue on with my imaging session here All right guys, I'm done with my image session. I just finished up my flat frames. All in total, I got about 40 light frames for tonight. I wanted to get about 70 like I had the last two nights. I got 70 each night. However, we have a light cold front moving through and it's bringing in some pretty heavy cloud cover right now. In fact, the moon is fully enclosed in clouds right now. So I had to end the session early. Not only that, it's like I said, it's on my third night of imaging and I'm actually I'm pretty tired because I've stayed up all those nights. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring all these images into PixInsight and get them edited. I'm pretty new to PixInsight and so I'm not gonna really show my editing process because I gotta, it's just gonna take me a while to edit them, but I'll show you the final image. And with that being said, guys, that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think.